Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Hey everybody, Kathy Guggenauer here with our Dare to Leap podcast. Today, I have the honor of interviewing Stephanie Oquendo. She is an author, content creator, mom, wife, and key member of a corporate executive team. Wow, do you think she has enough hats she has to wear? (laughs) Just give you a little insight. That's part of what she's going to be talking with us about today. Through her own journey, Stephanie realized the power every woman holds to cultivate and live a life of her own design by valuing and prioritizing herself. Oh my goodness, Stephanie, that's so powerful. I'm so excited to interview you about this. Stephanie's hope and mission is to help every woman realize the same. She believes self-care should be a standard, not a luxury. And Stephanie lives in New York City with her beautiful family. Welcome to Dare to Leap, Stephanie. Thank you, Kathy. I'm so excited to be here. So Stephanie and I know each other because we have worked together Stephanie has edited videos for me and things like that, and she has her own business. In addition to being a wife, mom, and a member of a corporate executive team, she's also written this beautiful book, Me Time. So Stephanie, my first question for you is, why did you decide to write Me Time? Well, um, me time really came out of my own journey. Um, I started journaling in the format that me time is in during a very hectic time in my life. Um, so I'll backtrack a little bit. I, I've always been a journaler. I've always been a writer. That's how I best express myself. Um, but I've always journaled in more of an expressive way in more of a sporadic way, just whenever I felt like it, um, no real like aim or focus. Um, and around the time that I became a new mom, and shortly after that started my side business, um, and I was also still working in corporate, um, I was pretty overwhelmed to say the least. It was, it was, there was a lot of new stuff happening. And so I really felt like I needed more control. I needed more control of my days. I needed to feel proactive and intentional versus reacting to everything, right? Because I was jumping literally from one thing to the next and never being present in anything. Um, And so just little by little, this kind of um, more intentional form of journaling just kind of organically resulted. So I would do things like, make sure right when I started in the morning, right when I woke up, I focused on gratitude. And so little by little, I just habitually kept doing that because I found that it was helping me. It was, it was helping my mood and it was helping um, just my day go better. I was a lot more able to handle whatever was thrown at me if I gave myself that time in the morning to focus on that. Um, and I would still free write I think that's very important. I just think that that's not enough. I think you have to also, there are certain prompts and questions that you should ask yourself every day just to make sure you're on track. Um, So along with gratitude, gratitude is the first part of my um, four-part formula, I guess you can call it. Um, The four prompts that I like to focus on every single day because I really feel like they keep me focused and they keep me productive and moving towards the direction I want to go in. And they also keep me sane. So along with gratitude, um, celebration is very important. 
I found that I was doing a lot of stuff and I was always busy and I was never acknowledging my successes. I would just always think, oh my gosh, I have so much more to do. Like, of course, if you're, if you look at that, if you look at it that way, there are a million more things that you have to do, but it's very important to acknowledge what you have done, what has gotten you to this point. Um, after celebration intention. So what do, what did I feel I needed from my days, right? So sometimes I felt very overwhelmed. And so my intention would be slow, peace, um, you know, a slower pace, take it easy today. And I would literally write that so that it would be, I could remind myself and just kind of look for those opportunities throughout the day. And then lastly, priorities, because as busy women, we have to-do lists miles long and everything seems urgent everything seems important and we have to get it done right now um, but that's just not the case if you focus on what your true priorities are in this current season of your life that's also something to be mindful of um, there's a time and place for everything and just making sure that the things that you're trying to, that you're focusing on throughout the day actually make sense that they align with bigger priorities in your life and the direction that you're looking to head. And I think three is a magic number. For me, if I focus on three and I, I get those done, I feel accomplished. Um, I used to, you know, just try to fit in as much as possible. And um, that just wasn't sustainable. And um, also having three things that you know you accomplished, now you can celebrate those things. Remember, go back to the first part. Um, you can say, I got this done, I got this done. And it doesn't have to be the biggest things. Like sometimes for me, it's I got laundry done. Like literally, that's celebra That's worth celebrating. That's a big um, thing. Laundry's a big thing. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, so then this, uh, this book, so actually it was, I was journaling in this way for a while. And I was just doing it in a regular spiral bound empty notebook I would have this kind of structure for myself and um, it wasn't until the end of last year that I had the idea of actually taking this this formula and putting it into a journal of my own because I knew if it helped me then it has to be able to help other women out there in my same situation yeah, so I'm just going to open the book so people can see inside here that what she's talking about is every day you have the sections that you just talked about. You have the section at the top for I am grateful and then a section for I am proud of myself for and then a section my intention is and I want to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And then your box is at the bottom to type in what your three priorities are. And then over on the opposite side is the space for the free writing like you were talking about. Yes. So nobody has to think about or write down this formula she talked about. Because when you get this book, it's all laid out like this. And you can see that the book is not a skinny little book. It's really nice. The pages are feel beautiful they feel luxurious um, it looks beautiful and so while you're writing in it you're gonna have that luxury feel that becomes a standard for your life and by the way I didn't share the um, subtitle on this which is a guided journal for self-reflection and intentional direction I love that subtitle too yeah. so talk a little bit more about the section that my intention is. Yeah, so actually when I was receiving feedback from the journal, um, that was actually um, a section that, or a prompt that when we were having trouble with, they were asking me, how do you find, how do you come up with your intention? Um, and I always tell them, just think about what you need. Like that's, that's the whole purpose of being able to be present so you can hear your thoughts, so you can feel what your body is telling you, what your intuition is telling you. Um, so that's how you can come up with it. And then if you're intentional, 
throughout your day, if you have that in your mind, if you have your intention in your mind, your brain is going to find ways to make it happen. Um, and I think that's why it's so important to stop and, and set that for yourself. Um, you can decide the tone for your day. You can decide what you get out of it. You don't have to uh, react to everything. You know, you have more control than you think. So give us an example of an intention that you might set for yourself or intentions that you might set for yourself on any one day. Yes. So um, you mentioned before, um, overwhelm is a big problem that we deal with as busy women, as ambitious women. Um, so sometimes my intention is slow, is peace. Um, other times I may need a little bit more of a boost. I may need some extra motivation and, and energy. And so my intention is just go get it, like do the thing, you know? Um, yeah, I think it's just every day is different for all of us. Um, and really tuning into your body and tuning into what your intuition is telling you is really important. So I'd like to give people an, a clearer idea because, you know, I, I like to be a little bit of a voyeur. And I think a lot of people are like that. You know, like if I go on a walk in my neighborhood, I want to look inside people's windows and see what's going on in their life. So let's give people a little look inside what a day in the life of Stephanie Oquendo is like. So um, give us an example of your typical like Monday through Friday kind of day. When do you get up? What, what do you do? And then, you know, all the way through to what time you go to bed at night. Okay, sure. So I wake up around 5 a.m. And that's my me time. So from 5 to about 6.30, is is on a typical day, um, I have that time to myself. So I start off with coffee. That's number one every single day. <laughs> can't do anything about my coffee. Um, and then I sit and I journal. Um, I'll play some music in the background, some like relaxing music. I'll light a candle. I'll journal. Um, and then I'll meditate. I think those are the three main things that are kind of non-negotiable for me. Uh, and then after that, I have some time to work on my business. I call it my important work time. So I'll do whatever needs to be done that day uh, for my personal stuff. And then my son is up. So we'll get him ready. And at, pretty much after my son is up, it's go, go, go. It's nonstop. So um, we'll get some breakfast, get him ready and dress for school, get him over to school, then commute to work. Uh, I get to work around 8.30, 9, and then I'm there until 5.36. Um, and then I come home, and it's dinner time, it's family time, and then I call it a night pretty early because by that time I'm exhausted. I can't function after 9 o'clock. <laughs> um, and then I wake up again, and I, I do it all over again. So... Um, and what's your work hours at your corporate job? Work hours are nine to five. So I'm, I'm currently in quarantine, right? So I'm working from home. So I'm trying to go back um, to, to when I was actually going into the office. And it was nine to five, nine to six. Okay. And so you had to get up that early at five, not only to get ready for work, but to have some me time. And then to be able to get your son going. How old is your son right now? He's four. Four years old. What a great age. He has to have so much energy. So much. So much. <laughs> I wish I could like take some and bottle it up. Just like a quarter percent. Like anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, and you're also married. So do you, how does your husband get involved in all of this? How do you guys manage that? We're literally partners. Like, I couldn't do it without him. I couldn't do it without him. I couldn't do it with the family that's close to me. It literally takes a village. Um, and so he picks him up from school every day because I'm at work later. And, 
you know, we pretty much tag team our way through life. <laughs> That's so, good. Yeah. So any tips for women who are listening to this and think, I wish my partner would be a partner with me in our relationship and help with the children. Any tips on how to get your husband as involved as yours is? Um, I would say it starts with a heart to heart, just being really honest, sitting down and being really honest and saying, look, this is what's important to me. This is what I have going on. Um, you know, this is your child too. <laughs> so let's, <laughs> you know, let's, uh, let's make it work. Um, and just, yeah, really just making him feel like a partner and, and giving him, I also think, get, let him um, do this thing. Because if you're constantly micromanaging, like, okay, make sure he eats this, make sure you don't let him watch this. Like, you know, now it's, he doesn't feel as equal as you. Um, so I think just respecting him and his parenting and he respecting me and my parenting, um, coming together when we need to. Yeah, I would say it's, it's all about communication. All about communication. Yeah, good tip. And when you get home, how do you, how do you eat? Who, do you cook? Does your husband cook? Do you order in? What do you guys do? I almost never cook, and that's why I mentioned family because I live very close to family and I'm so thankful to have um, my aunt. I actually live with my, uh, my aunt lives on the floor above me. We have a multi-story house. Um, and also my cousin who's like my sister and my grandfather. So they help me so much also with my son. Like I don't have to come home and worry about cooking, which is, I mean, a blessing. Oh, that's huge. So you get good home cooked meals that you don't even have to cook. Yes, exactly. That's great. And that is, I mean, that's important to have family like that. And even if you don't have literal blood family, please don't become a victim and think, well, she's lucky. She has a family. I don't. You're, you can create your own family. Stephanie, any yes. words of wisdom on that? For sure. Friends, neighbors, um, you know, can you switch off? Can you do the tag team thing I talked about earlier? You know, can they watch your child for two hours a week and then the next week you can watch their child so they can do something like, I think there's always a way. Um, I think we have a hard time asking for help and that's the main mm -hmm. thing. Um, we can get over that. Then, you know, we'll start finding resources. Any tips on how to get over asking for help? Oh, um, how to get over it. You know, the, oh, I don't want to bother people. Yeah. Um, you know, if I ask for help, it feels like I'm bothering them. And, and maybe they'll think I can't do it all. I'm not capable. Oh, God. I think r really just releasing that need to control everything. Um, I think you oh, can that's feel it. So when you try to, when you're trying to control everything, trying um, you feel like you're out of control, like you're not in control of anything. The more you force it and push, the, the, actually the less in control you feel. Um, and, and also just know that you're also helping. You know, it's not where you're asking for them to just do something for you. You are also, you know, willing to contribute to that partnership. It's a partnership versus like, I need you to do this for me. Right. Yes. Oh, that is such wise information. So, Stephanie, you always look perfect. I have never seen you when you didn't have your hair perfect, have your makeup perfect. Your, I mean, your chair is perfect. <laughs> your background is perfect. And, you know, I've seen you in several different situations and at several different times, and you always look like this. So, um, how do you have time to do that? Um, so first I just want to say I don't always look like this. <laughs> um, <laughs> you got me fooled. <laughs> I think um, I'm just used to, you know, um, 
just getting myself ready, getting myself presentable because I am in the corporate world. And so that's just something I, I'm used to doing, waking up, you know, putting some makeup on, um, doing my hair, making sure my outfit is, you know, is decent. <laughs> um, and then as far as like my space, that's something that I've recently found has helped me a lot, like cultivating a space, a beautiful space, a space that just gives me or has good energy because it helps me with my energy. So having things around my house, like little things like plants or, you know, a certain paint color, like I find that that really um, helps me. I can't, I can't deal with clutter. Like whatever I see is what my mind holds. So I have to be intentional even with that stuff. So if anybody's not watching this on video, you might want to go to my YouTube channel and check it out because Stephanie, and Stephanie, I don't mean to embarrass you by saying this, but you look like a model or a movie star and she always does. And in fact, if you want to see some amazing photos of Stephanie and her family, Stephanie, where can people go to see all those photos that you post on, oh, in, on social media? Instagram. Um, I'm always on Instagram. So um, you can find me on Instagram. It's just my name, Stephanie underscore Wendell underscore. Um, and that's, yeah, I, I love to be on there. Let's hang out on there. Yeah. And uh, everybody just know that I will have in the show notes the link to Stephanie's Instagram site, the link to where you can purchase her book. And while we're talking about that, why don't you just tell everybody where they can purchase your book, Me Time. Oh, so it's available on Amazon. Um, so if you type in my name, Stephanie O'Quenzo, it'll pop up. If you go to my website, stephanieoquenzo.com, um, you can uh, there's a link to purchase on there. Um, it's on my Instagram. It's everywhere because I want to get it in as many hands as possible. Yeah, and as soon as it became available, I bought it. Um, again, it's just, I don't know if you can see, again, if you're not watching the video, um, you might want to go look at it because I'm showing the book. It's a beautiful cover, beautiful colors. Are these the colors that you were talking about that make you feel happy in your house too? Yes. Oh, well, the cover was very intentional. Um, so when I, when I have my me time, it's in the morning, right? It's in the early morning. And so I always have the privilege of watching the sunrise and I love to see all of those colors. I love the violets and the pinks. And so I knew that I wanted those colors represented on the journal for sure. And that is exactly what it looks like. I hadn't made that connection that it looks like a sunrise. It is absolutely gorgeous and does look like a sunrise. Oh, I'm so glad I asked that question because now I really get it. <laughs> really get it. So you have a four-year-old child, you're married, um, you have a full-time corporate job that means a lot to you and you truly enjoy, right? Yes. When did you have time to write a book? So I, when I, I tell women this all the time because I get that question a lot and I say, time I've realized is something that you really have to make you have to maximize um when I decided to write this book or when I decided to start taking more care of myself and giving myself that time in the morning um I didn't get extra hours like nothing you know nothing became easier I just had to work with what I had and so every day I have at least two hours I've been able to carve out at least two hours a day where I can work and focus on my personal business and um, that's just how I was able to do it I um, I set out so firstly I set out with a very specific goal date that I wanted the journal to be released and that was April 11th so um, that was exactly three months from the date that I decided to I was gonna do this I was gonna self-publish my journal um, and from there, I just kind of worked backwards. So I created a roadmap, a little roadmap for myself um, after doing some research on Google and, and, you know, finding out all that was entailed in self-publishing a book. Um, I just started making a list like, okay, I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do that. Um, putting, them, putting them in order, figuring out 
okay what were the main what are the main steps I have to take and I'll break those down what are all of the baby steps I have to take to get there and like I mean like tiny tiny like the tiniest most actionable um, most tangible steps I could take because it was the only way that I would be able to do it with the time that I had um, so being very intentional with that I set dates for everything um, and I held myself accountable to those dates like by this date you have to have this done because if not now it's gonna screw up the timing for this um, and again just making it really simple making it something that I knew I could do uh, with the time frame that I had um, keeping my date up all the time to just remind myself keep myself on track and um, focus I think I, at least this is true for me, I have shiny object syndrome or I've suffered from it in the past. <laughs> I, um, I Most start people do. On, I do yeah. too. <laughs> I'll start working on something and then another, I mean, I have a myriad of ideas in my head at any one time and um, I want to act on all of them because I'm creative and, and I want to, you know, bring them into fruition. But um, what I've noticed is like, okay. I, my energy is already split as it is, you know, so in that time that I have to dedicate to my business, I really have to be focused. It's not to say that I can't do these things one day, but right now this is my focus. This is what I need to get done and I need to see it to completion. Um, and so I think that was also really key in, in getting the, the journal done in the time frame that I did. So did you ever... Um, have times where you're like, all right, today I know I have to do this, but I just don't feel like it. Oh. And then how did you snap out of that and do it anyway? Yes, I know. those. It's, it's never going to look perfect. It didn't look perfect for me. Um, there were days where I just wanted to sleep in. There's still days where I feel like I, most days actually, I feel like I want to sleep in. <laughs> but I know that if I do, there's a cost there. I'm not going to get that time back. And my day is just not going to be the same. Um, and this journal was really important to me. And the reason behind the journal is really important to me. And who I want to help is really important to me. And so I kept just trying to keep that at the forefront and get out of my own way and stop worrying about me so much. And, and um, I think when you do that, when you can make your purpose, I say this in the book, when you can make your purpose, your focal point, you'll get out of your head, you'll get out of your own way, and you'll get into action. Oh, I love that. So don't focus on what you're going to get out of it so much as what the purpose and the mission that you have and your why, why you're doing this. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. So in your business... Is do you is there anything else that you want to share with people about your business itself? Um, well, I'm a content creator. I have a YouTube channel, and I'm really focusing on making that um, more um, of a priority this year. Focusing on all of the content that I've laid out in the journal, um, and yeah, I also I'm on Instagram all the time. Um, I really try to spread my message and my mission through those platforms and reach as many people as possible. So I would say the other part of my business is definitely social media. And can you share your YouTube channel with everybody so sure. that they know where they can go watch you and then talk a little bit about what your videos are that you're putting on there now? Sure. So it's just my name, Stephanie Alfonso. I made it really easy for me to remember. I just put my name. <laughs> so if you type my name, you'll find me. And what kind of um, information are you sharing on your YouTube channel? I share a lot about um, self-care, productivity, um, all of these things intertwine. Um, I love to share inspiration and motivation. I love to share my own experiences and um, story. I like to weave that into my content. Um, and just like tangible tips, just like, um, just tangible things that anyone can do at any day to make progress and to change their lives. Yeah. 
And do you still have your videos um, from a couple of years ago on there where you teach people how to put on makeup and things like that? Yes, I keep all of my um, videos up. Yeah, so everything. Good, because I really loved those videos. I used them <laughs> to try to begin to learn how to put on makeup. You would think at my age, I would already have that figured out, but you know, <laughs> Stephanie, I don't. So I will go and watch those videos over and over again because you give great tips and you demonstrate how to put the makeup on in a way that I could understand. And believe me, it's not easy for me to understand how to put on makeup. <laughs> By the way, I don't have any makeup on today, so don't be looking and going, this is how you put on makeup based on how Stephanie taught you? No, I don't have any on today. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so stephanie you mentioned that self-care should be a standard and not a luxury so could you talk a little bit more about that about you know why you believe that a lot of people think it is luxury and why it shouldn't be luxury yes i think i mean uh, yeah why it shouldn't be luxury i want to make yeah. sure i said that right <laughs> i think um I think it's just like, um, I know what I want to say. I just need to gather my thoughts a minute. Um, okay, I'm ready. Um, okay. Well, I think as women and mom and business owners and career women, I think we have a lot of priorities. We have a lot depending on us all the time. Um, and so it's easy for us to kind of put that first, you know, like if I don't get it done, who is going to get it done? Um, and then, you know, when I have time, I'll go do something for myself. But again, like I said earlier, it's like time waits for no one. Like if you're not intentional with your time, it's going to get away from you. Um, and I think that women also feel like it's, or they can feel like it's selfish. Like if they do something, especially if they do something like me, it's first thing in the morning, it's before anything. That's my time. Um, and that's non-negotiable. So I think, again, you have that to-do list in your head and you have everyone else's agendas in your head. Um, and you're just, women are just giving. I think just naturally giving and nurturing and it's just like, we can't help it. Um, but I also feel like um, on the flip side, if we can get away from the notion that self-care is selfish and realize that actually you matter you know, your self-care matters, taking care of yourself matters just as much as taking care of anyone else. And when you can give yourself that standard, you can set yourself that standard, it actually has a positive ripple effect that's not possible otherwise. So while you may think or while it may feel like you doing something for yourself or you giving yourself time or you focusing on a goal or a dream that you have, um, may feel like it's all about you. It's actually not. It's, you're going to see the effects in every aspect of your life. You're going to show up better. You're going to feel better. You're going to be a better mom. You know, you're going to be a happy mom. You're going to be a happy wife. You know, you're, you're going to excel in your career and your business. Like it's, it's, it's like, it's all it takes is a perspective shift and, and actually experiencing it to know that, okay, yes, this is important and this has to be a priority. I have to be a priority, not only for myself, but for everyone and everything else in my life that is dependent on me. Yeah, I love what you just said because a lot of women, I hear it all the time, and I don't have time. I would, I would feel selfish if I did this. Um, and the reality is, is they are slowly dying yes. maybe emotionally right. maybe physically right and it's right. almost like i describe it as being like a hamster wheel so <clears throat> when i used to just be busy 
and busy is is very different than productive. When I used to just be busy and, and running around and doing a hundred things and a um, hundred miles an hour all the time, I felt like I was in a ha- in a hamster wheel. So it, like I'm doing a lot of things, and you would think I would I was being productive, and you would think I was making traction, but actually I wasn't going anywhere. I was stuck in a loop. Um, because being busy is not enough. You, you also need that, you need direction and you need to be focusing on the right things and you need to take care of yourself. So setting those intentions daily and then identifying those top three priorities, is that what got you out off of that hamster wheel, off of that busyness and into being more productive? Yes, definitely focus is a big one. Um, because not only do you feel focused and productive, but if you're working on, if I was working on something that was important to me um, at that time in my life, and I was actually making traction and I saw that, then I also felt purposeful. You know, everything, this is for a reason. And I'm, you know, I'm making progress in the areas that matter to me. I'm making, um, you know, I'm, there's a difference. You feel a difference within you. You see the differences Uh, the difference in your life, you see evidence of that in big and small ways. Stephanie, I'd love to know what do you do for self-care that you make a standard, not a luxury? Yes. So um, definitely my morning time. Um, So coffee, meditation, journaling every day. Um, I also do like to do my makeup. Like I, I like to get glam. I like to look nice. Like that for me is not, that's all about a feeling for me. It's, it's not, can seem like it's very superficial, but I feel a lot better when I'm put together and I, I feel my best. I feel more confident. And so I portray, you know, I, I show up more confidently. Um, also, uh, there are specific days like I'll take a couple days a month to try to um where I'll ask for child care so I'll have someone babysit Jaden and you know I'll like just have even if I don't go anywhere or do anything like so grand if I could even just be at home relaxing you know maybe I'm not even doing anything but like that is something that I need then that's that's really powerful, and I think um, yeah, I think if more I think if more women just just uh, just got away from the guilt that of uh, that feeling of guilt that doing those things can bring up, um, and just realize like I'm gonna come back better. Like when I go and get my son, I know I'm gonna be better than I was before, especially if I was feeling overwhelmed or you know, things are kind of chaotic. I know that if I have that time, I'm going to come back better for him. Yeah, that's really good. And how about your nails? Because your nails are gorgeous. Again, if you're not watching the video, you want to go see it. Show those nails, baby. (laughs) I, I talk about this every chance I get because I get this a lot too. So these are my current nails. Beautiful. And as you know, we've been in quarantine, and so the nails, I'm in New York, and the nail salons have been closed, and they're just starting to reopen. But even though I like to, like, um, to have myself, to put myself together, I hate, like, going to salons and the maintenance of it and waiting. I do everything myself. And so... Oh, that's actually- so interesting. So that's not a pleasure for you to go do that and wait and all that. So instead, you do it all yourself. Yes, and literally, like, you can find these at the drugstore. They're $8. (laughs) Wow, there's a good tip. Yeah, I just, I do it all myself. Because, again, um, maximizing your time, right? Priorities. I know, like, if I spend an hour at the salon on a Saturday, like, I just think, like, there was something I would have rather done, and now I lost that time. Um, so I just find ways to like make things work and put my priorities in the forefront and then everything else yeah. is like, there's always a, there's always a way to figure out these things. <laughs> yeah. Well, you obviously have it. 
So I'd love to know, Stephanie, first of all, let me just say, I have had the honor of being part of your life for the past couple of years. Virtually, we, it, we did get to meet in person <laughs> one time, um, which was awesome, but mainly virtually. And I have watched you go from a really powerful woman already to blossoming into this amazing business owner, author, and upping your level of empowerment and helping others so tremendously just in a couple of years. So I'd love to know what your plans are next. <laughs> so um, my plans next. Um, so I mentioned focus and focus is really a reason, a big reason why I was able to get this journal out. And so now my focus is all about scaling it, getting it out there, getting it into as many hands as possible, changing as many lives as possible. And so just spreading the word. That's what's next for me. Um, making sure me time is, you know, I spread my mission. I spread that message um, to as many women as possible. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. So in wrapping up, I just want to ask you, is there anything we haven't talked about that you want to be sure to share? Um, just looking at my notes. We can cut I love that you out. came prepared <laughs> with notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, okay, yes. So, um, I think this is more for the perfectionist women out there, um, <laughs> which I try to be, um, and I quickly realize that's just not, that's not the way. It's really progress over perfection. Um, so I would say in order to get the most out of this journal and this journaling practice, um, I would really um, encourage you to use it as a daily practice and use it as a ritual for yourself. Um, don't look at it as one more thing you have to do. Don't look at it as something you have to do perfectly every day. There are days where I might miss a day. There are off days. You know, there are days when things just don't work out as perfectly as you plan. You know, you can make plans, but you know, they're not always going to go perfectly. So um, just have grace with yourself. Do the best that you can. Um, know that when you're ready, your journal is going to be there. You know, you can pick right back up from where you started. But it's really important for you to be in a high vibe when you do this practice in order to get the most out of it. Um, and just listen to whatever comes through. Make sure you get down whatever comes through. Don't edit. Don't question yourself. Um, don't hesitate. And, you know, just allow the pen and the paper to do the work. And, you know, a lot of times you'll be enlightened by what you discover. And then as far as the intentional part, um, you know, just focus on baby steps. Like even if they're tiny, tiniest steps, all add up, it's like compound interest. You know, in the moment it may not seem like much, but every single step counts. And I truly believe that what builds genuine, sustainable um, self-love and self-confidence and overall happiness are those steady deposits that we make into ourselves every day. And no matter how big or small, and a lot of times small is best because small allows you to make traction. And, um, you know, that's how we build lasting change. Oh, Stephanie, thank you so much for sharing that um, because that perfection thing is a real issue. And I had noticed, and I'm looking at your book again here, that you did not put dates. You know, it's like it's a calendar. Calendar dates are not included on any of the pages. And I'm guessing you did that intentionally. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yes, um, I didn't. I didn't include dates, and I also didn't include lines. So for well, for the the self reflection part, um, right? I just felt like lines were restricting. I felt like 
this is your time. This is your choice, how much or how little you want to get down, how much you want to express yourself. That's up to you. There are no rules to this. You know, you do what feels best to you. And then um, for the dates, I just feel like, again, if maybe this day wasn't such a good day, but that's okay, tomorrow's a new day. You know, put that date up there and focus on that day and get the most out of that day. Can't change the past, can't change what happened yesterday, but every day is a new opportunity to do your best. Yeah, and for me, I don't like dates on things like that because then if I have to if I skip a couple of days, then I feel like, oh, look at that blank page is there. It's a reminder uh-huh. that you are lacking. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. I just want to focus yeah. on progress. Get away from the the yeah. perfection that's just not realistic. Right. Well, Stephanie Oquindo, author of Me Time, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you, Kathy. This is so fun. Thank you so much for having me. You are welcome. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. (laughs) 